Right now, Invest 95L is definitely having a lot more convective activity compared to yesterday as it's continuing to head further westward. So there's still that possibility this um, disturbance could develop into Tropical Storm Emily. However, just to the east of this tropical disturbance, we have another tropical wave coming off the West African coast that could potentially develop into Tropical Storm Franklin as we approach the weekend. We're going to take a close look at both of these two tropical waves as they continue head further westward because they could potentially bring significant impacts to the Caribbean but to, focusing on invest 95l right now we do see that there is of course a lot more convective activity compared to yesterday this was expected from the computer models since the mid-level winds are stronger than the lower level winds we're now seeing the mid-level moisture reach the low level center so now we're seeing a little bit more of consolidation regarding the amount of lift there is between different levels of the atmosphere so that's allowing for more convective activity to occur however despite this convective activity it's still going to be rather difficult for this to develop into a tropical cyclone the chance certainly still exists but it's definitely lower compared to yesterday but you still need to pay close attention to the possibility of heavy rainfall right around the windward islands of course, the primary reason why this storm has been struggling and is expected to struggle as it continues ahead further westward is due to the amount of stable air surrounding it. There's a decent amount of Saharan dust. We see this swath of dry air continuing to move towards the convective activity. So that's limiting the amount of thunderstorm activity that's going on around this low pressure system. And that's expected to continue as this heads further westward. And not only that, the wind shear will certainly increase as well, which will by the time I'll say it, it approaches a longitude of uh, Puerto Rico um, when it moves further westward that's when the chance should completely diminish for this storm of developing into a tropical cyclone since the wind shear would be too strong at that point along with the dry air it's currently dealing with the wind shear isn't that bad right now but the dry air certainly is keeping it at bay from developing potentially into a tropical depression and it could stay like that for the entirety of this um, tropical wave's existence as it continues ahead further westward. However, focusing in the more long-term future, we do see that the Climate Prediction Center is forecasting that there should be another area where the, the chance of tropical cyclone development should be enhanced just to the um, east of the windward and leeward islands. And it, it even includes portions of the Lesser Antilles and goes as far west as um, Puerto Rico. So you definitely need to pay close attention by next week as well because we have another pretty powerful tropical wave coming off the West African coast that's going to bring, I'll say, more moisture than this current, um, than, invest, than what we're seeing with Invest 95L. So certainly that chance exists by next um, by this coming weekend for a new tropical storm to develop. In terms of the new possibility that um, Invest 95L has in developing into a tropical cyclone, it's definitely a lot lower than what we saw two days ago, where a chance was at a very high chance, at a 70% chance, but it seems like the storm over the past 48 hours has dealt with a lot more dry air and was struggling a lot more than anticipated. So we saw the National Hurricane Center lower its forecast now to a low chance, still a 30% chance. So there's, of course, still that possibility. It's not, com it's not very low to a point where you could completely disregard it. But at the same time, it's less likely it's less likely we're going to see a tropical storm develop out of this tropical wave, but you still should expect heavier rainfall throughout the windward and leeward islands, like I said earlier, and potentially for Puerto Rico and Hispaniola as well. So here's what the latest run of the GFS model is stating at this time, and it's pretty much what you'd expect when it comes to Invest 95L, a storm that really stays around the same strength, maybe strengthens just slightly before reaching the Windward Islands. And however, we do see that, all, especially on the western side, I, I mean the eastern side of this storm system, that's where all the heavy rain is located. And I'll also say part of the reason why we aren't going to see this, um, we're likely not going to see this develop in such a tropical storm is that we're going to see a little bit of a disparity between the, the mid-level moisture as well as a low-level center. And of course, we for tropical cyclones to be well-organized and to strengthen, it needs 
um, it pretty much needs the moisture to be surrounded, um, to be right around the area where the low level center is because if it isn't then that spaces out a lot of the energy too much for the wind speed to increase and for the convection and lift and pressure to um, decrease so that definitely would inhibit um, tropical cyclone development if we were to see a storm that's a little bit asymmetrical and that's what's expected right here with the GFS model since the lower level winds and the mid level winds won't be really on the same page but moving forward into the more long term future we do see that another tropical wave should move through the main development region and it won't really organize very quickly I wouldn't say this will have a good chance of developing until it approaches the Caribbean that's when we should begin to see the moisture consolidate a little bit more the storm system become a little bit more compact because early on we do see that the moisture is a lot more spread out and the moisture can't be too spread out um, if a tropical wave wants to have a chance of developing into tropical storm because that means that the energy and the air molecules are too spread out for the for the wind speed to increase and the pressure to lower along the surface um, but we do see that eventually the storm becomes a little bit more compact by the time it approaches the caribbean and this borderline a tropical storm at this point it, with with its millibar pressure hovering around the 1012 millibar range and we do see of course an enhanced amount of rainfall associated with this tropical wave and even if this doesn't um necessarily develop into a tropical storm we still do see that on the eastern side of this storm there's very heavy rainfall impacting the dominican republic so there could be that enhanced risk of flooding as this tropical wave continues ahead further westward but there's several factors that could inhibit this storm from be, being able to have a good chance of developing i'll go over those right now one of the main things that i believe that could be a potential inhibiting factor that will limit this storm from developing is the amount of wind shear we're going to need to see the wind shear certainly increase for this storm to have a good possibility of developing because we do see by the time this approaches the lesser antilles the wind shear is quite strong we do see that there's an upper level low located just north of it um, an upper level low located right over the bahamas and that's creating a strong upper level flow right over this storm system so of course it'll have a difficult time being able to organize with wind shear this strong however it's good to point out that the forecast hour is still very far out so this could easily change but I will say that the pattern over the past of weeks has been that there's been strong wind shear over the Southern Caribbean. So I'll say that it's unlikely that we're going to see the wind shear completely go away in the Southern Caribbean, but it could be just enough to a point where we could see a developing tropical storm that could impact the Caribbean islands. We're going to need to pay close attention to how strong the upper level winds will be. However, earlier than that, at least for Invest 95L, we do see that the wind shear does increase quite a bit and that's definitely gonna be the reason why if it wants to develop it's gonna need to develop relatively soon because once it approaches the southern caribbean that's when the wind shear dramatically increases to a point where the chance diminishes for tropical cyclone development over that area and over wind shear conditions that are that hostile so we're going if invest 95l wants to develop it's going to need to do it relatively soon while it's over an area where the wind shear is relatively light so we're definitely going to need to pay close attention especially to the next 24 to 48 hours when it comes to invest 95l but as for this next potential tropical wave the wind shear is looking a little bit strong at this point to a point where um, a GFS model doesn't want to strengthen this much more than potentially a weak tropical storm or just a regular tropical wave but there's still a lot of days to iron out the forecast so I'll keep you guys updated if we do see changes we're definitely going to need to see these two upper level lows move out and allow the wind shear to be a little a little lighter for this to have a good a good chance of developing and of course, the amount of stable air that will exist over the main development region as well as the Caribbean will be huge in determining if these two tropical disturbances develop into tropical wave. For Invest 95L, we do see that the convection increases, but like I said, the storm is pretty lopsided. There's a decent amount of dry air on the western side so it's going to be very difficult for this storm to develop a fully closed and organized center of circulation with one area being with pretty much the moisture being very asymmetrical for a closed center circulation to develop the moisture needs to be on all sides for there to be enough lift 
around the center of circulation and we aren't seeing that with the gfs model we do see that it's a bit lopsided this storm and if we were to take a look at the soundings you're going to see exactly why the upper level winds are a lot weaker compared to the winds you're seeing in the lower levels which means that the moisture that's located in the upper levels will be a little bit behind compared to what you're going to see uh, um, compared to where the low level center will be so that means that the energy will be too spread out for this to have a good chance of developing so i'll say the chance is less likely but we could potentially see just enough moisture to where it could become tropical depression status but the chance is definitely lower today but moving on to this next tropical wave we do see that it's going to have a decent amount of moisture there's going to be a little bit of dry air to the north of it, which i think will be in in the main inhibiting factor early on but we do see that the convection will increase and by the time we approach um, monday july 31st which is in the very long term future there's a decent amount of moisture surrounding this storm system and it's sort of shielded away from the dry air but again the thing that will be an inhibiting factor is that the storm is going to be very asymmetrical because we do see that the low level center will be located right here and all the moisture will be located on the eastern side not the western side and that makes it very difficult for the storm system to develop a closed center of circulation to strengthen that much with the storm being this asymmetrical and that's due in part due to the strong wind shear and if we were to take a look at the soundings you're gonna see exactly why as well the lower level winds are again moving a lot faster than what we're seeing in the mid to upper levels which means that a lot of the moisture will be behind where the low level center will be so we're definitely going to need to see the winds be a little bit more even between the different layers of the atmosphere for the storm for the moisture located in the upper levels and the low level center to be located at approximately the same area to maximize the heat engine as well as the amount of convergence and lift there is around this storm system to be potentially become a tropical storm that so has yet to be seen but um, because there's of course we're still very far out with the forecast but if it's able to do that then i'll be confident to say that a tropical storm could impact the caribbean as early as next week um, this coming weekend or early next week the european model is showing a very similar forecast with invest 95l it's likely going to remain a tropical wave with the potential of developing into a tropical storm but it's very it's definitely less likely due to the amount of dry air but for this next tropical wave that could become tropical storm franklin we do see that the main inhibiting factor in the european model scenario is that there's still a lot of dry air a lot more than what we see in the gfs model scenario and it just sort of just fizzles it um, out because there isn't enough lift or convergence going on around the center of circulation but it's good to point out that since both the european and the gfs model are forecasting that a strong trouble wave will move in by next week and have and be potentially strong enough to reach trouble storm status I will say that we're likely going to see a pretty powerful tropical wave impact the Caribbean islands on um, this coming weekend in, or into early next week and with the potential of a tropical storm. That's what I could say with a lot more certainty, but the question remains it, um, is how much dry air there will be and how strong the wind shear will, um, there will be, which is so uncertain at this time. This could potentially become a strong tropical storm if those two conditions end up not being as strong as computer models certainly anticipate but um but i'll keep you guys updated regarding any changes with between the european and the gfs models forecast it's going to be a close forecast but you should expect a pretty powerful tropical wave to potentially impact you guys in the caribbean here are what the european ensemble members are stating at this time and we do see for invest 95l there's not really much on some members wanting to develop this into tropical storm status but they do take us further south or track so the windward islands should be prepared for heavy rainfall as well as potentially gustier winds especially in that area while the bigger caribbean islands at least for invest 95l might avoid a lot of the heavy rain since it's going to move very far south but moving on to the next potential tropical wave what's a little concerning is that we do have a decent amount of them wanting to develop this into tropical storm status 
this in the more long-term future as it takes its track further northward and by the way the track will depend on the amount of ridging of course if the, the ridging is a little stronger we should see a, see a track that will impact more of the northern um, Caribbean islands but if we were to see the ridge a little weaker then we should see a track that moves more out to sea which would certainly be the best case scenario so the ridge will play a big role in terms of its trajectory over the next several days so keep that in mind but we do have a decent amount of them taking this above tropical storm status so it's certainly at least something to be aware of around the caribbean islands for the gfs ensemble members we do see that there's a little bit less um um on some members that do want to take it towards the caribbean islands and we see them strengthen potentially even more but the good news is that in these scenarios they go out to sea but still a lot of time to iron out the forecasts um with the european and the gfs model are sh still showing some differences regarding the exact trajectories of the um tropical waves so we're gonna need to pay close attention to how they change over the next several days and here's the model intensity guidance for Invest 95L. We do have still a decent amount of the money to take this to tropical storm status, which is definitely interesting. That chance still exists. I'll still say more likely it's so it'll just remain in tropical wave, but don't rule out the possibility of a stronger storm. But regardless, expect heavy rainfall and gusty winds right over the windward islands as well as the lesser Antilles. So here's my overall forecast when it comes to the potential of Tropical Storm Emily and Tropical Storm Franklin. So for Tropical Storm Emily, I or potential Tropical Storm Emily, I do believe that it's less likely going to develop into a Tropical Storm, but a uh, strong Tropical Wave should still be expected. And as for Tropical Storm Franklin, the forecast is definitely a lot more uncertain. Pay very close attention to how this ridge builds over the next several days. If you want to know how bad you'll get impacted over the Caribbean islands, it, this could move southward or northward. Or, and this could have a chance of developing into Tropical Storm. So it's definitely at least something to be aware of as we approach um, this coming weekend. But um, So definitely pay close attention to that. But... That's it for now, guys, and I thank you guys for watching.